welcome to the next lecture in power electronics we were discussing the power diodes and in this lecture we will focus our discussion on series and parallel connected diodes so let us start with the series connected diodes generally in high voltage applications such as high voltage dc transmission lines often requires the diodes with some specific voltage ratings in such scenarios a single commercially available diode may not be sufficient to meet the necessary voltage rating so you may not be able to use only one single diode for such high voltage applications to address this limitation diodes are connected in series so when you connect the diodes in series the voltage rating of the system increases to enhance their reverse blocking capabilities so if you connect the diodes in series like this so you will be having the voltage sharing v1 and v2 and the total voltage will increase you cannot connect the diode in the reverse way otherwise it will be connected back to back and no current will be flowed so here we can see that the two series connected diodes so you have a diode d1 and there is a diode d2 which are connected in series the diode voltage vd1 and vd2 are connected in series so it will have a positive sign and the supply voltage is vd which will flow the current id in the network the vi characteristic of these two diodes having the forward characteristic in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant you will be having the reverse characteristic with the different d voltage in the reverse characteristic so in practice the vi characteristic of the same type of diodes differ due to tolerance in their production process even though these diode d1 and d2 are of same type then also we can see that the reverse breakdown voltage are different this may be due to the production process under the forward bias conditions so here you have the forward bias conditions both the diodes conduct equal amounts of current with nearly identical forward voltage drop so the current id which is flowing in the series connected diodes are same and the potential drop vd1 and vd2 which are the forward voltage drop are nearly identical however in the reverse blocking condition so this is the reverse blocking conditions each diode must handle the same leakage current potentially leading to significant difference in blocking voltage so these two voltages are different but more or less the current should be the same so the leakage current should be the same ideally speaking it will be having a little bit difference due to the construction of these two diodes an effective solution to this issue involving which ensure that equal voltage sharing should be there among the diodes by connecting a register across each diode so when the two diodes are connected d1 and d2 in series the registers r1 and r2 are connected in parallel with these two diodes this may ensure that the voltage in the reverse condition will remain the same so the series connected diodes with steady state voltage sharing characteristics we have the diodes connected in series and you have the resistance connected in parallel with its own diodes now here we can see that the diode will have the same reverse voltage with the current in the reverse saturation with the minute difference both having the same value by implementing this approach the leakage current of each diode would vary thereby addressing the potential discrepancies in blocking voltage so you will be having the leakage current which is slight variation will be there but the voltages will be more or less the same having the same voltage during the reverse bias conditions so the total leakage current must be shared by a diode and its register now the current is which is the reverse saturation current is will be the summation of the current flowing in the diode and the register so this may be due to the diode d1 and this is due to diode d2 so you have the current reverse saturation current is which is distributed in the current is2 and the register current ir2 similarly the current is1 plus ir1 will give you the 
reverse leakage current. Now, you can easily see that this current IR1 is basically equal to VB1, which is the diode voltage divided by the resistor R1. Similarly, the current IR2 is equal to VD2 by R2. You can say that the VD2 and VD1 are basically equal because they are sharing the same potential. So I can say IS1 plus VD1 by R1 is equal to IS2 by VD1 by R2. And if the two registers are equal, these two registers are of the same value, then I can say that IS1 plus VD1 by R is equal to IS2 plus VD2 by R. Or otherwise, the sum of these two potential, VD1 plus VD2, will be equal to the entire potential Vs in the reverse situation. Achieving voltage sharing during the transient conditions. So these transient conditions may have arise when the switching loads are there or upon initial condition of the input voltage. So due to the switching load condition or in the initial application of the voltage, some transient will take place and these voltage sharing will be achieved by connecting the capacitors across each diode. So diode D1 and D2 both are in series. These registers R1 and R2 were already connected in parallel with these two diodes. Now due to the transient voltage sharing you will be having a capacitor which is connected in parallel with the diodes and series with a register RS. So this will take care on the steady strain voltage sharing and this will take care of the transient voltage sharing. The register RS is necessary because it will limit the rate of rise of the blocking voltage. If this register is not there, then the change of the current will not be handled. So di by dt, which is the change of the current rate of rise of the blocking voltage, so whatever the uh, voltage you, are, you need to block in the reverse condition will not be taken care of. Let us solve one problem to understand the scenario of two diodes connected in series, it has to share a total DC reverse voltage reading of 5 kV. So this voltage has to be 5 kV. The reverse leakage current of the two diodes are given to be 30 mA and 35 mA. So here you can see the reverse current IS1 and the reverse current IS2 of the two diodes are given. Find the diode voltage if the voltage sharing resistances are equal. So this register R1 and R2 is equal to 100 kilo ohms. First condition. Second, find the voltage sharing resistance if the diode voltage are equal VD1 and VD2 equal to VD2, VD by 2. So this voltage VD1 and VD2 are equal which is equal to half of this VD. So two conditions are there. We need to obtain the solution. Let us see the first one. So this equation we have derived that the current IS1 plus VD1 by R is equal to IS2 VD2 by R. We can say that VD2 is equal to VD minus VD1 because the total voltage is VD. So I can say that the VD is equal to VD1 plus VD2. So I can obtain VD2 from here and put it in this equation. Upon rearranging this equation, I get the solution for VD1 which is we have to obtain in terms of the register leakage current and the supply voltage. So the supply voltage here was given 5 kV. So VD is 5 kV and the reversed saturation current IS1 and IS2 are already given 35 and 30 mA. So we get the voltage VD1 is equal to 2750 volt. So we are getting the solution of VD1 is equal to 2750 volt. The VD2 is nothing but we can subtract the 5 kilo volt from 2750 volt. We get what is VD2. Second, uh, we have to determine the diode resistance. So from this equation, uh, which is the current sharing equation, we can easily obtain the resistance R2. So this resistance R2, we can obtain by rearranging the equation 1. And it is given that the resistance 1 is equal to 100 kilo ohms. So here, if we substitute this resistance to be 100 kilo ohms, the register R2 we can get it 125 kilo ohms, substituting all the other values. On the other hand, uh, the next topic that we have the parallel connected diodes, this is uh, in high power applications. So high power applications, diodes are often connected in parallel. 
to enhance the current carrying capability. So earlier we were having high voltage. Now we have high current meeting the desired current requirement. So when the current is distributed in the parallel path, the net current capability will increase. So the total current I will be equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. So the current distribution among diodes correspond to their individual forward voltage drop. So you have the diode VD1, VD2 as the forward voltage diode and number of diodes connected in pipeline. If you want to find the current, we have to divide with its own register that is R1 by R2 and R3 and so on. So here we can see that diode D1 and D2 are connected in parallel and there are two registers R1 and R2 which are connected in its series. So to achieve uniform current sharing, so here the current will be flowing in the parallel path and the total current is ID. So in order to achieve this uniform current sharing, equal inductances such as in the leads or current sharing registers can be provided although the latter may not be practical due to power loss. So when you add some register, obviously losses will be associated with. So under the steady state condition, you can use this circuit, but in the dynamic sharing conditions, you have the diode and the register and together you have some inductors connected that is in series with the diode. This may be due to the leads which are present in the network. So the diodes, which are connected in parallel will now increase the current capability of the entire system. So minimizing the discrepancies in current sharing is possible by selecting diodes with similar forward voltage drop on diodes on the same type. So you have to minimize whatever the discrepancies are there in the current sharing between the parallel diodes by selecting the proper diodes with similar forward voltage drop. Parallel connection of diodes may ensure that the reverse blocking voltage across each diode remain consistent. So when you connect the diodes in parallel, the reverse voltage will be equal. Register aid in current sharing during steady state conditions. So when you have the steady state condition, the registers which are connected in series will help in current sharing. Under dynamic conditions, current sharing can be managed by connecting coupled inductors. So we are connecting inductors under the dynamic conditions. When the current through one diode increases, the di by dt term across one inductor rises, inducing an opposite polarity voltage across another inductor. So when you have inductors which are connected in series and this is connected with a register and itself as a diode and if the di by dt, that is the rate of change of the current in one of the inductor is increases. So here you have the di by dt term which is increases. It will induce an opposite polarity voltage in the another inductor. This is due to the principle of mutual induction. When there is a current flowing in one of the inductor, other inductor will have a potential. This is a mutual induction principle. So this induces a low impedance path through a different diodes effectively shifting the current. So the second inductor we have a potential uh, potential in, in use because of the first inductor which is having the current di by dt to increase. So this potential will induce a low impedance path and hence the current shifting will be there. However, the use of inductors may lead to voltage spikes. So you, will, you cannot have the uniform voltage but you can have some voltage spikes that can be costly and bulky, particularly at high current. So when the current will increase, more and more voltage will. So this lecture we focused on power diodes, how they are connected in series and parallel, depending upon the requirement of high voltage or high current. We will take this discussion further in the coming lecture. Thank you for now.